Starting off this countdown, we have the Fairy Feller's Master Stroke. The Fairy Feller's Master Stroke is Richard Dad's most famous Baroque painting. It's quite beautiful at first glance with all the flowers and intricate details. But turns out that Richard painted this while incarcerated in a state criminal lunatic asylum. In 1843, he suffered a psychotic episode, which ended in him brutally killing his father with a razor and five inch knife. He then proceeded to hide the body and flee to France. But while fleeing, he tried to kill a fellow coach passenger and was arrested and brought back to England. And then he was locked away after telling authorities he was instructed to kill his dad by the Egyptian god Osiris. Coming in at number 9, we have the Anguished Man. I absolutely cannot stand looking at this picture. I know that art is subjective, but I can't imagine having to look at this painting ever, let alone having it as a focal spot in my home. This painting is called The Anguished Man, and the urban legend goes that it was painted with the artist's own blood, mixed with oil shortly before they killed themselves. That's right, painted in blood, then they committed suicide. Great! Once again, why would you ever hang this? The owner, Sean Robinson, was handed down the painting by his grandmother, but claims he doesn't display it because nobody likes it, and I wonder why. On the few times that he has displayed the picture, he and his family have reported strange goings on, such as bangs and voices and strange smells. They even reported that the painting moves of its own accord. Trying to find proof, Sean set up a camera in his spare room and recorded the activity over the evening. This is a piece of the footage that was recorded in June 2011. That's right, there it is. Now, according to Sean, the painting was at an angle and against the wall, and there was no drafts present, so it should not have been able to fall like that. This next one is a little bit of an urban legend, but stories are all over the internet. Coming in at number 8, we have Sonny's suicide painting. So according to urban legend, a teenage Japanese girl called Sonny drew this picture and then scanned it into her computer and uploaded it to the internet. The image reportedly had quite the effect on viewers, who said that they saw sadness in her eyes. They also saw her face change expressions after staring at her. In South Korea, the story garnered a lot of momentum, and people would claim that they stared at her for longer than five minutes, her face would twist into a taunting smirk. According to the legend, some people who stared at the picture for longer than those five minutes were compelled to commit suicide. Now it turns out it is all just an urban legend though, and the picture is by an artist called Robert Klang. The girl in the image is a fictional character called Princess Rue. Coming in at number seven, we have the misty painting of Bernardo de Galvez. Look at this majestic fellow. This is powerful historical Spaniard Bernardo de Galvez, who was instrumental in the Spanish military in the late 1700s. The city of Galveston in Texas is named after him, as is the city hotel, Hotel Galvez. In the hotel, there is an oil painting of Bernardo that is reportedly haunted by none other than the chap himself. The painting sits at the end of the downstairs hallway and is quite the feature. Despite being a beautiful old painting, a lot of the guests at the hotel simply don't like it one bit. A lot of people have complained that they feel cold when they're near the painting, and almost all guests of the hotel will tell you that they feel Bernardo's eyes moving to watch you. It seems if you try and take a picture of the painting without asking permission of the late great Bernardo de Galvez, it will come out blurry. However, if you ask nicely, the picture will be clear. Those eyes though, I mean, they're clearly seeing you. Coming in at number 6, we have the painting of Ivan the Terrible and his son Ivan. This 1885 painting by Russian realist artist Ilya Repin has been causing a stir since it was created. The painting shows a more mortally wounded Ivan being cradled by his Tsar father, who has wounded him. It is reported in history that he murdered him, although a lot of critics challenge the historical accuracy of that statement and this painting. Nonetheless, it is one of the most famous Russian classics, and it is currently in the Moscow State Tetchikov Gallery. When the painting was first unveiled, a lot of people claimed to be deeply unsettled by it. Some say they saw something terrible within the picture, other than the already terrible subject matter. In 1913, a mentally ill man slashed the painting with a knife, and it was restored by Repin himself. Once again, the painting was slashed in 2018 by a visitor to the Moscow Museum. Now, he reported to be shouting that he saw terrible images moving within the picture. The man was identified as Igor Podporin, who claimed that he was overwhelmed by something. He later blamed vodka for his outburst. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the approaching storm. This painting is quite unique due to the fact that the top of the canvas is actually carved out, giving it kind of a 3D look. The painting has been named the Small Pine and barn with approaching storm painting. It's a very 
original title. Now, what's the big deal about this painting, you ask? Well, it was created by serial killer Jeremy Jones. Jeremy claimed to have taken the lives of 21 women in five different states over the course of 12 years. He was finally caught in 2004 after he killed his neighbor and set her home on fire. And this is another painting that you can purchase if you want art done by a gruesome killer in your home. If you do, it's yours for $625. Coming into number four, we have a moving morning portrait. Now this is a really scary video uploaded to YouTube in August 2008. Uploaded by Haunting Painting, it is called Scary Ghost Girl Painting Movements Captured and that's pretty accurate. The painting is of an unknown child in the 18th century and is reportedly a mourning painting, a memento mori. This basically means a painting of a person that's died and it's been commissioned in order to remember them. Now it seems that this mystery girl is haunting her own painting. The narrator of the video says that she sometimes weeps and that occasionally her mouth opens. Now, this moment was captured on camera, right? Terrifying. Now, a lot of people in the comment section are calling this fake, but honestly, I really didn't like looking at this picture while I was scripting this video. Coming into number three, we have a painting of a headless man. I am not okay with this painting. Why? Well, because at first it looks like a nice little depiction of an old station wagon. That is until you realize there's a freaking headless man hovering around in it like a decapitated creep. The artist Laura P painted this image in response to a photograph James Kidd had taken of a stagecoach stop in Tombstone, Arizona. The finished painting was hung at an office in Arizona, but after three days, staff demanded it be returned to her. Workers said that their papers would go missing and that the painting seemed to always move. They reported that despite being constantly straightened, the painting would always become crooked on the wall. Laura then took the painting back and hung it at her home. Unfortunately for her, the weird occurrences surrounding the picture followed her. She said the doors would start opening and closing on their own in the room that the painting was in and a glass even smashed in her hand right in front of the picture. Laura has expressed a desire to have the image destroyed, regretting ever creating the painting. She is worried what will happen if she does have it destroyed though. She doesn't want to anger the spirit. Coming into number two, we have The Dead Mother by Edvard Munch. Like Edvard basically just needed a hug. If you recognize his name, that's because he is the artist that was famously behind the Scream. I don't like the Scream either. I mean, it's a very, very good painting and very expressionist, but it freaks me out. However, I have to say this painting freaks me out harder. Monk's work is notoriously filled with pain and anguish, which is more likely than not down to his poor health and his difficult upbringing. His mother died when he was five, which probably explains this unsettling painting. Now the painting is called The Dead Mother and was completed in 1900. The picture is already scary to look at, but it gets even creepier when you hear what those who have owned it or worked with it have to say. Firstly, the little girl's eyes are said to incessantly follow people wherever they go, but were still, it is said that the sheets on the dead mother's bed rustle or move. Some have even sworn that the little girl leaves the painting altogether. Coming into number one, we have the hands resisting painting. Ugh, this again. I feel like this has come up on a few top tens before and I do not like it. The hands resisting painting gained notoriety in 2000 when it sold on eBay for just over $1,000. The seller claimed it was haunted and actually, it probably is. Reportedly, three people involved with displaying the painting died including the art dealer and the art critic who first reviewed the piece. Hans Resistim is a painting by Bill Stoneman. Now the name is said to have come from a poem written by his wife about her husband's adoption. In the painting, a boy is seen standing next to a creepy looking doll whilst disembodied hands pour a glass panel door behind him. The painting was found abandoned in a Californian brewery, which is where it seems the couple who listed it on eBay found it. Their wife wrote, One morning our four and a half year old daughter claimed that the children in the picture were fighting and coming into the room during the night. Now, I don't believe in UFOs or Elvis being alive, but my husband was alarmed. To my amusement, he set up a motion-triggered camera for the night. Now, the couple claimed that the motion camera even captured the boy exiting the frame under duress from the doll. And it was also thought that the hands in the background move. I don't like this. Now, the painting was bought by gallery owner Kim Smith, who shows it on request. She does so less and less these days because people keep on complaining of falling ill after viewing the picture. Since gaining notoriety for Hans Resistim, Bill Stoneman has created a prequel and a sequel image, both of which are horrifying. Starting off this countdown, we have the Stagecoach painting. So this painting has a very dark and twisted backstory, so 
No wonder it's cursed. So in 1994, a photographer named James Kidd took a bunch of photos of stagecoaches in Tombstone, Arizona. However, upon developing the photos, he realized he captured a ghost of a headless man. And then a painter thought it would be a good idea to recreate this photo as an oil painting. So she painted this headless ghost man and the ghost attached itself to the painting. Like seriously, what did she expect? So when the painting was complete, it was hung at a business. But a couple of days later, the business demanded that she take it back. Apparently, the painting was found crooked every morning, despite them constantly fixing it. They also blamed the painting for paperwork going missing and appointments getting messed up. The painting was just bringing them bad luck. So the painter brought it back to her home and she started experiencing bad luck. Her garage roof started leaking, but roofers couldn't find the source of the leak. And when the painting was moved, the leak stopped. That's what you get for painting a photo of a ghost. Wow, what a creepy painting. Moving on to number nine, we have the painting called The Left Hand by Theodore Jericol. Now, this painting comes with a dark backstory. Apparently, the artist Jean-Louis Andre Theodore would buy amputated limbs from the morgue as models for his paintings. He would keep these limbs in his house for weeks while he painted them. I mean, of course, he couldn't have used his own hand or his friend's hand as a reference. No. He literally gave a new meaning to need a hand. Well, anyway, some people believe that his paintings are cursed by the people whose body parts he used as a reference. Some people have claimed that they have felt a cold hand on the back of their neck or even felt a slight push while looking at this painting. The scariest fact about this is that Theodore died eight hours after finishing this piece of work. Thankfully, this particular piece of art is no longer on display. At number eight, we have the painting of Marie Laveau. Now, this image is carefully on display at the New Orleans Historic Voodoo Museum. Some people say that they can feel Marie's cold eyes watching them. Others say that once you see this image, then Marie will haunt you and even will show up in your nightmares. Oh, well, dang. I guess I won't be sleeping tonight. In fact, tour guides say that whoever wishes to see the painting must go alone. They refuse to go see it themselves. Others also claim that when they take a picture of the painting, their photos won't develop. So go to that museum and check out that painting if you're brave enough. Next up at number seven, we have the painting called Soul Bowl. Now, with a name like that, what do you expect? So this piece of artwork was listed on a website called Trade Me and the user wanted it out of her life, claiming that it was haunted. So this painting is of a bowl with the background almost looking like it could resemble the flames of hell. Now along the sides of the painting, it reads, the shape of my soul is a bowl. Creepy. Now, this painting was bought at an antique shop in New Zealand. However, after they brought this painting home, scary things started happening. She claims that some nights the painting would fall off the wall. She also claims that another night she saw a dark silhouette go from her bedroom to the painting. After numerous other paranormal encounters, she decided to sell it. I wouldn't think anyone would want a painting marketed as haunted, but apparently people like to collect spooky things. The painting ended up being sold for $123 to an anonymous buyer. She believes that this buyer took it off of her hands out of good nature and either burned it, locked it away, or tried to get in contact with the spirit. Next up at number six, we have The Spirit of the Bartender by Will Refuse. Now, I personally love thrift shopping. I love the sustainability aspect of it and how it's better for the environment. Now, I only buy clothes and I think I'm just gonna stick to doing that because this next individual claims that they bought a haunted painting from the thrift store. Now, in this story, a group of buds moved in together. One roommate bought some furniture and a painting from the thrift store. So this painting was of a ventriloquist dummy looking bartender. He is seen with big eyes and a creepy smile. They claimed that the bartender's eyes would follow you around the room and they felt uneasy about it. One of the guys even claimed that when you are alone with it, you feel like there's another presence with you. Two months later, things started happening around their house. One day, one of the roommates heard a loud bang at the door, but no one was there. The banging continued and every time he checked, no one was there. Then he would hear loud footsteps running up and down the stairs. Eventually, one of the roommates moved out and took the painting with him and donated it to the bar that he worked at. But apparently, they also experienced paranormal activity and ended up throwing it out. Now, if you research this artist, it shows that he paints a lot of the same things over and over again. 
It always involves some ventriloquist looking person and there are different variations of this bartender photo. It's quite creepy. Coming in at number 5 are the funeral carriages, located in Barcelona. I don't know who wanted to have a funeral carriage collection, like no I mean I do since I did the research, his name is Cristobal Tora, but still I don't know who would actually want a collection about that. He apparently wanted all funeral activity in a single building and with technical developments and the creation of motor cars, there were a bunch of funeral carriages that just were now useless, so he popped them all in this collection. It features 13 carriages, 6 coaches, 4 motor vehicles and other just decorative death pieces I guess. He created it to show future generations how our ancestors used to transport the deceased because I'm sure we're all very curious about that. Like I'm curious about the past don't get me wrong, like I want to know how cavemen really lived and communicated, how people survived after those head drilling procedures, not how dead bodies were taken to the cemetery, sorry not sorry. Honestly all the carriages are so majestically gothic, like the fancier than the transport I take and I'm alive. Moving on at number 4 we have the haunted thrifted painting. Again, don't buy your paintings from the thrift stores. So this was posted on reddit one year ago by the user Young Balsamic. He claims that one day he was thrift shopping when he came across this painting. Now he did claim that he does like creepy dark things so it wasn't too weird for him to buy this scary painting. Now although this looks badly hand painted, he claimed that the painting spoke to him and he felt overwhelmed like he just had to have it. After a few days he noticed that his cupboards would open and close, lights would flicker and things would fall down. He would even hear scratching coming from the wall that the painting was on. Then he started to see a dark figure in his dreams. He said that he would get stuck in some sort of sleep paralysis and he would be visited by a figure with no eyes. He then would start to have the same reoccurring dream every night. He even said he was visited by the faceless people in this painting. That's when he decided to take apart the painting. When he removed the frame, he said that his whole house started to smell like sulfur. He also realized a dark cross was painted on the back of this image. He then put this painting in his basement storage locker where it still remains. He doesn't know what to do with it and is scared to burn it with the fear that he will annoy the demons. I mean, I would just donate it back to the thrift stores, let them deal with it. In our third spot, we have the portrait of the doll. Now unfortunately this piece does not have any pictures associated with it and I will explain why. So this is a story of another girl who bought a painting from a thrift store. Don't buy paintings from thrift stores. So similar to the guy I mentioned before, this girl felt drawn to this particular photo. She felt like she was lured into buying it. This picture was of an old doll. She claims that when she hung it up in her room, she immediately felt like she was being watched. Even her friends that slept over would say the same thing. Now she doesn't know who the artist is and can't find a picture of the painting online. She thinks that it's an original piece of art. Now she was getting really scared from this painting that she too hid it in a storage room. Immediately the uneasy feeling she felt before just stopped. But she claims that whenever she goes down to the storage room, the same feeling overwhelms her. Coming in at number 2 we have the painting of the weeping children. Now this is a collection of paintings created by Giovanni Bragolin. All of his paintings in the series depict little girls and boys all crying. It is said that whoever owns these paintings will face tragedy. In fact, a string of house fires were all thought to have been caused by these paintings. All of the houses that caught on fire were completely destroyed except for their paintings that remained perfectly undamaged. One of this case is of the family Ron and May Hall. Their house unexpectedly caught on fire and they lost almost everything except for the painting of a crying boy. The painting wasn't even blackened by the smoke. Now these images were mass printed in the 1950s to the 1970s so a lot of people own different pictures from this collection. Some people have locked their art away so that no one else buys it or so that their own house doesn't get burnt down. However, there are still some in circulation so be careful. And in our number one spot we have the auctioned painting. Again, unfortunately I don't have an image of this painting as it was an original and the artist remains unknown. So this person claims that when he was 8 years old, his mother bought a haunted painting from an auction. Now this painting is of a woman around the age of 30 who is wearing a long bluish grey gown. She is seen standing in front of a veranda with a tea set, kettle and a plate of cake and sandwiches next to her. They believe that the painting was from around 1900 to 1910. They hung this painting in the hallway and when they did so, strange activities started happening immediately. Now they claim that the hallway was always warm since it was summer, but when the painting was hung up, the hallway was always ice cold. All the kids in the family were also scared of this painting. In fact, his little 6 year old brother would walk on the other side of the hallway. Now at night, they would often hear whispering coming from the hallway. 
and one time they reported seeing a flash of blue in the corner of their eye, like the dress was coming out of the painting. Now, one day the little brother even tripped down the stairs and said he felt a cold hand push him, and even their pets would growl at the painting. Eventually, they decided to sell the painting to an arts collector. He currently keeps this painting locked up in his basement. Sorry. All right, starting off this countdown, we have the painting of Samantha Houston by Richard King. So this painting doesn't look all that scary. It shows a cute little girl in a pink dress smiling while holding a bunch of pink roses. Honestly, if I didn't know the backstory, I wouldn't regard this as a scary painting. So apparently, this is a painting of a girl who fell to her death after chasing her ball down the stairs. This painting was made in her honor and hung up in the Drizkill Hotel which is the place that she passed away. Um, excuse me, the hotel is called Driz Kill? Coincidence? I think not. Well, anyways, guests at the hotel have claimed that they feel dizzy and nauseous while around the painting. Others have claimed that they have felt as if they were being lifted off the ground or have even seen the girl change expressions. Now, some people own replicas of this piece of art and they too have felt dizzy and nauseous around it. As a result, those people have had to remove those paintings from their home. Although some people have this painting locked away, unfortunately I believe that the original painting still remains on the fifth floor of this hotel. Moving on to number nine, we have the dead mother. You may not have heard of this painting by Edvard Munch, but chances are you have seen his famous piece of artwork. Now this painting is quite dark. It depicts a dead mother laying on her bed while her child stands there covering her ears. This painting is said to represent the devastation that Scandinavia faced due to tuberculosis. Just when you thought the painting couldn't get any worse? It said that the eyes of the child in the painting will follow you. Others say that they have heard the rustle of the bed sheets from the photo and have heard the mother cough. Others claim that they have seen the mother change positions or that they've seen the child move, blink, or even disappear from the painting entirely. The painting is for sure cursed. What else can explain this? Coming in at number eight, we have the Rokeby Venus. The Rokeby Venus, otherwise known as Venus at her mirror or the toilet of Venus, is a beautiful painting created in 1658. The painting features a half naked woman, Venus, staring at herself in a mirror that Cupid is holding. This is actually a lovely painting, but it's said to bring sickness and death to whoever owns it. One woman died mysteriously while the painting was in her family's possession. Other owners were murdered. As a result, no museum or hotel or other place ever wants to own it. Then in 1914, a British female rights activist sliced the painting with a butcher's knife. She did this because she was disgusted by how men were staring at her body all day long. So she took a meat cleaver and sliced it. But rumor has it that the canvas barely got a scratch. Only if you look very close at the painting can you see the slash marks. It's thought that the painting is so strong that not even a physical object can stop it. Moving on to number seven, we have the witch girl. Now, I couldn't find much information on this painting. It features a picture of a girl crying, but I don't know who painted it or even the year it was created. All that's said about it is that it's a painting of a witch child and apparently it's very haunted. So it said that the painting once belonged to a Spanish man who felt like the girl's eyes in the painting would follow him. He also said that at night, a gray silhouette would appear right by the canvas. In fact, Many people are convinced that the specter is Madame Delphine LaLaurie herself. LaLaurie was known for torturing her slaves in very, very gruesome ways. But now my question is, why is she haunting this painting? And is it really her? In our sixth spot, we have the stagecoach painting. So this painting has a very dark and twisted backstory, so no wonder it's cursed. So in 1994, a photographer named James Kidd took a bunch of photos of stagecoaches in Tombstone, Arizona. However, upon developing the photos, he realized that there was a ghost of a headless man standing on a log beside the stagecoach. And then a painter thought it would be a good idea to recreate this photo as an oil painting. And as a result, that ghost attached itself to the painting. Seriously, what did she expect? So when the painting was complete, it was hung at a business. But a couple of days later, the business demanded that she take it back. 
Apparently the painting was found crooked every morning despite them constantly correcting it. They also blamed the painting for paperwork going missing and appointments getting messed up. The painting was just bringing them immense bad luck. Then when she brought it back home, she started experiencing bad luck herself. Her garage roof started leaking. But roofers couldn't find the source of the leak, and when the painting was moved, the leak stopped. On top of that, things would break on their own and she would hear weird ghostly noises. Coming in at number 5, we have the Weeping Children. The Weeping Children are a collection of paintings created by a man named Govani Bragolin. Every painting features a little boy or girl crying. Now it's said whoever owns these paintings will face tragedy. So in this case, all of Giovanni's paintings are cursed. In fact, a string of house fires were all thought to have been caused by this painting. All of the houses that caught on fire were completely destroyed except for the paintings that remained perfectly undamaged. Take the case of Roy and May Hall. This couple owned one of these paintings. Their house unexpectedly caught fire and they almost lost everything, except for the painting of a crying boy that wasn't even blackened by smoke. Yeah, I've heard of those paintings before. It's super freaking creepy. In our fourth spot, we have Maria Lopukina. This is a portrait of Maria Lopukina, a young Russian woman who sadly died of tuberculosis. The painting was made in 1797, a few years before her passing. And now it's said that her restless soul haunts the painting. In fact, it's so cursed that bad luck will fall on whoever looks directly at the painting. It was said that the painting contains some kind of power that can cause healthy young girls to die die randomly. In fact, this has happened so often that people are convinced that the portrait actually steals the souls of the girls and traps them inside the painting. In our third spot, we have the suicide girl. Looking at this painting, you wouldn't think there'd be anything to be afraid of. Hmm, just wait. So story goes that a girl committed suicide shortly after creating this image. She drew the picture, scanned it, posted it online, and then she took her own life. Now, legend goes that if you stare into the girl's eyes for too long, then she will get you to take your own life as well. Some that have stared at it for a while have claimed that the portrait turns evil. The girl gets an evil smirk on her face and dark circles appear under her eyes. In our second spot, we have Man Proposes, God Disposes. Painted in 1864 by Edwin Henry Landseer, this painting was inspired by Sir John Franklin's expedition in 1845, when they disappeared without a trace. This painting is how Edwin imagined their fate would be, but little did he know that he created an extremely cursed painting. So this painting is hung up in the exam hall at Royal Holloway University of London. Rumor has it that in the 1970s, a student committed suicide after staring at the painting. All he left behind was a note that read, the polar bears made me do it. Other students have said that they felt uneasy while sitting next to it. As a result, students purposely go out of their way to avoid this painting, and the university has to cover it up while students are taking tests. And in our number one spot, we have the anguished man. This has to be by far the most haunted painting in the world. So story goes that a man named Sean Robinson inherited the painting from his grandmother. The artist of the painting still remains unknown, but it's said that he mixed his own blood with the paint. They ended up killing themselves shortly after finishing the painting. Sean's grandmother was convinced that this painting was haunted. She would hear screaming or crying coming from the painting, and she would often see a shadowy figure by it. As a result, she kept it locked away in her attic. They believed that it was haunted by the ghost of the artist. When Sean inherited the painting, bad things started to happen to him and his family. His son was pushed down the stairs by the ghost, his wife felt someone stroking her hair, and a shadow would lurk through the halls. To this day, Sean keeps the painting locked up in a secure location. It said, it's far too dangerous for anyone to own. Starting off this countdown, we have Miss Bell. For weeks, a man named Alan Smith was haunted by a pale figure of a woman in his mansion. Apparently, this woman would lurk around the hallways and in the bedrooms around 1 o'clock in the morning. She could be seen surrounded by a blue haze and just drifted around the house. Then one day, he found a painting in his house and realized that the woman in the painting was the woman who was haunting him. After doing research, he discovered that the ghost was of a woman named Miss Bell. She used to live in the mansion. 
but apparently she went bankrupt and lost all of her possessions. Well, Alan ended up hanging the painting in his home, and ever since then, the haunting stopped. Miss Bell seemed to be at peace. But it's said that no one else can own the painting except the mansion's owner. If the painting ever leaves the premise, Miss Bell will arise again and haunt those until her painting is returned to its proper location. Coming in at number 9 are the skulls. Josef Hertel was an Austrian anatomist who taught lessons and showed preparations of animals as nervous systems, their kidneys, their skeletons, and most importantly, their skulls. Now he grew a huge fascination with the meaning behind skulls when his brother gave him the skull attributed to Mozart. And I'm not weird or anything, but I'd also want to see Mozart's skull. This is just me. He's a genius. I'd want to see it. Josef started collecting skulls and grew a collection of about 139, and he did it to disprove the teachings of phrenologists who claimed cranial features could be used as evidence of intelligence and personality, and that skulls differed based on what race you were. I don't know what to say to that. that, that. Now, Josef was like, that sounds like a whole load of bull, so he collected a bunch of Caucasian skulls from Europe to show they're all different despite them all being the same race. The collection is located in the Mutant Museum in Philadelphia and each skull is mounted on a stand with that person's age, cause of death, etc. And honestly, it's freaky, I'm not gonna lie. Just imagine a hundred plus skulls all lined up next to each other. It looks like a trophy case for a serial killer. One that I'm not interested in, quite frankly. At number 8 we have Cupboard 55. Now unless you're an avid museum goer like I am, you may not know about the hidden cabinets. The hidden secret sex cabinets, that is. These cabinets are usually tucked away behind curtains, shutters, etc. and are only Opened for a certain group of people. They contain risque art that apparently no one wanted seen even now. An example of this is Cupboard 55, located in the Secretum at the British Museum in London. The cabinets of obscene objects was created in 1865 and houses everything that was frankly way too saucy for the general public. Dr. Alfred Witt presented the collection to the museum as what he called the symbols of the early worship of mankind, which is just a really fancy way of saying he collected a lot of dicks. He collected every breath representation of the phallus in every place he travelled. I'm talking Egyptian dicks, Roman dicks, medieval dicks, dicks with eyes, with wings, wax dicks, lamps that are dicks. You get the picture. A lot of dicks. Now he didn't do this to create the setting for your next erotic fiction. He did it to show how different cultures around the world viewed sex and what their attitude towards it was. Okay, There's even a giant stone phallus wrapped in flannel that people thought was a pillow used by an aesthetic monk. When evidently it wasn't. Now this one isn't scary. Per se, I just thought it was a weird one, so I was like, let's pop it on there. Filling our number seven slot is the Medicine Man. Now, the Medicine Man exhibit is part of the Welcome Collection, which is essentially a free museum and library located in London. The purpose of the collection was to show how people viewed things like health, birth, sex, and death over the centuries, and the pieces are interesting to say the least. There's a waxwork of Queen Elizabeth I's face, and half of it is her face, and the other is a decaying skull being eaten by insects, and that kind of just reminds me of the stuff I'd have to draw when I did art during like year 10 and 11, just decaying shit. And flowers. Another display is a bunch of terracotta replicas of feet and hands and ears and various other body parts that Romans used to leave in temples and shrines hoping for better health. But the creepiest one for sure for me is Black Madonna, which is a 12th century statue of the Virgin of Guadalupe. The painting is gorgeous, I have to say, but her face is just black, like pitch black. You can barely see the outline of any facial features, which initially made me think it was just like a faceless woman wearing a dress. I mean, she has no eyes either. If I could see her eyes, I'd be like, oh, okay, all well and good, but where are they at though? Now at number 6 are Unseen Forces. Now this is one of the collections at the Museum of Bad Art, and it's filled with art from a bunch of different artists. One called Vanishing Woman was painted by Hannah Hamilton, and it's creepy as hell. She painted an apparition of a woman in a field, and the woman is like neon grey yellow, and half see through, and seems to be bleeding from her eyes. It's actually really well done, I feel like it's in the wrong museum, it's not bad art at all. Another really weird one is Crew Cut Dreams by Leonardo. The picture is basically a man stuck amongst like seals and snakes and other animals, but none of them look like animals. They're literally just long rectangular shapes enveloping the man, and the man himself has like the creepiest smile on his face that I've ever seen. Another one is called The Scientist, and it's by an anonymous person, and the piece is literally a skeleton sad over his lab experiment that went horribly wrong. It's mixed media, so that means paint, marker, latex gloves, oh, and of course bodily fluids. Safe to say this was a mixed bag. We are now 
at our fifth and halfway mark with the painting of Maria Ivanova. Now, this piece of art was painted by a Russian artist by the name of Vladimir Borovikovsky. It was painted in 1797 of a young woman named Maria before she passed away from tuberculosis. Now, people believe that this painting causes bad luck to whoever looks at it. Well, that's great. Looks like I'm getting bad luck and so are all of you. So, ooh. They believe that this painting had some sort of power that could cause death to any unmarried girl. Dang it, that's me again. Also, it doesn't help that the girl's last name has Ivan in it. People also blame the painting for a bunch of tragic deaths of young girls that happened around the same time. They believe that their souls are now trapped inside the painting by an evil spirit. At number 4 are the fetuses. Frederick Rausk was a professor of botany and anatomy and his anatomic collection at Kunz Chimera is morbid. It makes your stomach turn a bit if I'm honest and it really makes me wonder what was going through his head when he made it. The exhibit holds more than 800 specimens, some of which include an injected head of a child with a dissected cranium and yes you can very clearly see where its neck bone would have attached. There's a cut humerus of a newborn, gotta have a bit of that, a fragment of a child tongue and mouth floor, injected fetuses of all kinds, conjoined ones, ones that have been injected with things in the womb, injected stillborns, injected mutated fetuses. I'm pretty sure the collection has an injected fetus of every month leading up to birth. Like, I feel like I, 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 speechless. I don't know what else I can say about this. Filling our number 3 slot is the hair. The Avanos Hair Museum in Cappadocia, Turkey literally made me gag, I kid you not. You know that cringy feeling when you're showering and one of your hairs is on your body and you're like trying to get it off but it's like stuck to your fingers. That's exactly the cringy feeling this museum gave me. It's actually located in a cave and calling it museum is a bit of a stretch because it's really just notes from all the female visitors who have come there with a huge lock of their hair attached to the note. Apparently the story behind the museum is that a potter was saying bye to his friend way back when when he asked her for something to remember her by. As you could have probably guessed she cut off a piece of her hair and the potter put it up in his shop and each woman who came in asked about the hair as anyone would. And after hearing the story, they too would leave a bit of their hair. The museum started in 1979, and at this point, it has like 16,000 locks of hair. Honestly, if I had heard this story from the pot, I'd be like, oh, heartwarming, great story, what a nice friend, and then leave. I wouldn't be like, oh, no, hold on a second. No, 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 no. Now at number two are bad dreams. Displayed at Suru in LA, this installation was done by Axis, and it's called Welcome to My Nightmare. Lovely. Her whole idea was that people are always so interested in their own dreams, they have no idea how interestingly bad other people's dreams can get, so she decided to create her own nightmares into art. One piece showcases an Irish coffin with an actual skeleton of a man in there holding a can of spray paint and a bottle of whiskey. And you're probably like, ah, uh, that's fine. No, no. There are also two huge live pythons just slithering all over the coffin. And no, no, it's not over yet. Within this glass enclosure is a half naked model just, you know, just there as eye candy touching the pythons because, you know, she can. I don't even want to get into what other things she had displayed because I feel like that's bad enough. Actually fully okay not knowing what your other dreams and nightmares are, Axis. Really, okay, no need to see any more. Done. And finally, at number one are the little girls. Also on display at Suru is the work of Chinese photographer and painter Zhang Peng. The photo collection on display just makes you feel a type of way, honestly, they're just haunting. Peng manipulated the eyes in each of his child subjects to make them look more flawless, to kind of comment on westernized ideals of femininity that Asian media just emphasize. The subjects are real children, but the way the artist has manipulated them literally makes them look like creepy dolls with like sad ass eyes. One piece is of a little girl holding a sharp knife ready to cut her birthday cake. Except the birthday cake has her dead goldfish all over it that she'd killed, and she has blood all over her dress, and you can imagine her eyes just big, dark, haunting. Another one is of a girl in a bathtub filled with blood. There are body parts floating over her in the tub and what makes it worse are like the blood streaks that are streaming down the bathtub. And then the girl obviously right in the middle looking at you like I don't even know. Now the worst one for me in the collection was a tiny girl in a wedding dress. The girl literally looks 5 years old at best. She's tiny, she's crying, she's in a wedding dress and she's heavily pregnant. I just can't get that eyes out of my head like I really can't. Like I hope when the pictures flash up like you guys know what I mean. 
starting us off with number 10 is the collection of weird objects. The Museum of Curiosity opened a gallery in 2012 that was what I can only describe as the weirdest art collection I've ever seen in my life. The first of this collection is an eyeball tray, literally, I believe it's a glass eyeball tray. I hope, I hope it's glass. It definitely isn't real, otherwise they would have decayed by now, I feel. The next is the Marauding Horde by Tessa Farmer, and it's the skeletons of two flies on a bigger flying insect which is just standing on a bird claw skeleton of some kind. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know what to say either. I didn't know what to say when I saw it, I don't know what to say now. Tessa has many other pieces in the gallery that are all equally horrific. The collection also features a bat skeleton, a box of teeth, it's, I mean, it's just a lot. But the scariest pieces are are for sure the insect battle ones. You guys have to google Tessa Farmer's work. You will be equally in awe and equally disgusted. Uh, how do you even prop up skeletons of ants that way? I don't even know. They're just tiny. Let's move on to number nine with the pyramid of skulls. Before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps us out. So the Pyramid of Skulls is just as it sounds. It's a painting of a bunch of skulls on top of each other. It was completed by painter Paul Cezanne. Now here's where it gets creepy. As Paul started getting older, he became fascinated by death. So from 1898 up until his death, all he would paint are these creepy paintings filled with skulls. This particular piece apparently emphasizes the fact that you need to confront death and reflect on it. Not only that, but his genre of painting is called Memento Mori, which translates into remember that you have to die. So if that isn't creepy, then I don't know what is. Moving on to number eight, we have the Raft of Medusa. The Raft of Medusa was created by Theodore Garrico back in 1819. The painting depicts the real life shipwreck of the French naval Frigette Meduse. On July 5th, 1816, 147 men set sail on this raft. Only 15 managed to survive. But those that did survive turned to cannibalism after being severely starved. Just knowing that backstory makes the painting way darker than it already is. Back to you, Brie. All right, in the number seven, we have the Japanese girl drawing. This is another painting with a very dark backstory. So legend goes that a Japanese student was found dead in her room. This was the last image that she had drawn before taking her own life. In fact, she scanned this image and posted it online for everyone to see. But legend goes if you stare into this girl's eyes too long, then she will get you to take your own life as well. Some who have stared at it for a while have claimed that the portrait turns evil. The girl gets an evil looking smirk on her face and dark circles appear under her eyes. If that's what evil looks like, then I guess I'm evil because I look like that in the morning. <laughs> Making our way down the list, number six, we have the Mona Lisa. Now I know what you're thinking. Lindsay, how is this painting scary? Well, it's not but its backstory certainly is. So there's this famous urban legend surrounding the Mona Lisa. Apparently a French artist took his life because he was driven mad by the mystery of the Mona Lisa's smile. French artist's name was Luc Mapereau. On June 23, 1852, he threw himself from the fourth floor of his Paris hotel. Later, a note was found in his room that read, and I quote, for years I have grappled desperately with Mona Lisa's smile. I prefer to die. Sadly, that's all we know about this case and Luke. It was featured in a 1999 Smithsonian article and in a book from 1966. It's a pretty creepy case. And now I will never be able to look at the Mona Lisa the same. Coming in at number five, we have Love Letters. Love Letters is a painting of a four-year-old girl, Samantha Houston, who is painted by Richard King in a style of a pre-existing work by Charles Trevor Garland. Samantha was the daughter of a Texan US senator who died in 1887, aged four, when she tripped and fell down a staircase as she sadly chased a ball. It seems, as a tribute, the Driscoll Hotel in Texas had a painting of her commissioned. Now this still stands there today on the fifth floor. It seems that Samantha's spirit may have imprinted on the picture as guests say that they've heard her giggling when they're nearby. Many guests report feeling like she's trying to tell them something, saying that they've seen her expression change when they look at the picture. Okay, in at number four, we have Zidzla Bukowski. Look, I know I said his name wrong. Okay, I know I butchered it just move on from it. Now this dude has created a number of creepy looking paintings, but the scariest one is this one right here. It features this weird creature crawling with a bloody wrap on its head. Honestly, it really creeps me out. To make matters worse, apparently this painting is cursed. And if you see it three different times, then you'll die. Yeah, so we all just saw the image once, 
two more times and bye bye. Okay, I mean, there's no proof that this legend is real, but still, I never wanna see that painting in my life ever again. I agree, I never want to see that painting again. Okay, moving on to number three, we have the collage of art balls. Here is another painting that can kill. So this painting is associated with a Japanese urban legend. Legend goes that if you look at this painting five times, then you will die. A little death note, but whatever. I mean, hey, at least it's five times and not three like the other painting Lindsay mentioned. Besides that, not a lot of people know much about this painting. It was painted in 2010, but we don't know by whom. And we don't know why it's cursed either. I mean, it's just a painting of a ball. And at number two, we have Watson and the Shark. This painting is a depiction of a real life tragedy. It was created by John Singleton Copley in 1778. Basically, back in 1749 in Havana, Cuba, a visitor on the royal consort was the victim of a brutal shark attack. He lost his leg in the attack and was badly injured, but thankfully he was rescued. This painting depicts just that, which is very dark. And finally in at number one, we have Man Proposes, God Disposes. This painting was created by Edwin Landseer in 1864. It depicts Sir John Franklin's ill-fated expedition in 1845. This painting is how Edwin imagined their fate would be but little did he know that he created an extremely cursed painting. So this painting is hung up in the exam hall at the Royal Holloway University of London. Rumor has it that in the 1970s, a student took his own life after staring at the painting while taking his exam. All he left behind was a note on his exam paper that read, the polar bears made me do it. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Bernardo de Galvez. This painting is said to be one of the most haunted paintings in the world. So the painting is a portrait of Bernardo de Galvez, a very powerful Spanish military leader. In the early 1900s, the city of Galveston opened a hotel named after him, and in the hotel they hung this massive portrait of him. But it seems as if Bernardo has attached himself to his portrait. A lot of guests have seen his ghost wandering the halls by his portrait. Others complained about feeling very unsettled while passing by the painting. In fact, a lot of people have reported feeling cold and uneasy when standing close to the portrait. Also, on a number of occasions, if you try to take a photo of the portrait, it will end up coming out blurry or completely dark. So the hotel truly believes that the painting is cursed by Bernardo himself. Moving on at number nine, we have the Charnel House. This is a piece created by none other than Pablo Picasso. It was first exhibited in 1946 and it is a very abstract piece. Well, turns out that the piece actually depicts a Spanish family that had been killed in their own kitchen. Picasso saw footage of this in a black and white documentary and was left shocked, to say the least. If you look at this piece, the lack of color is intended to symbolize the feeling of witnessing such violence on film. The longer and closer you stare at this image, the more you can interpret it. You can see the kitchen counter with the dishes up above, while a number of bodies lay on the floor below. That's what makes this painting very unsettling. At first you're like, whoa, what is this that I'm looking at? And then you're given the gruesome backstory, and then all of a sudden the abstract shapes form images. In our eighth spot, we have the cross country killer drawing. This next piece of artwork features a cloaked figure holding a set of scales, while a two-headed dragon casually chills below it. I'll leave it up to you for interpretation. Now, this cartoon cartoonish piece of work was actually created by Glenn Edward Rogers, otherwise known as the Cross Country Killer or the Casanova Killer. He's an American serial killer that was convicted of two murders, but suspected of many more. In fact, he admitted to killing 70 people, but later he was like, nah, I'm just playing. I didn't kill that many people. So we really don't know his true kill count. Fun fact, if you want to buy this piece of work, you can. It's currently on sale for $200 literally just because of who drew it. I don't know about you, but I do not want my home decorated by pieces made by serial killers. No, thank you. Moving on to number seven, we have Christine's World. This piece of art was created in 1948 by Andrew Wyeth and features a young girl laying on the grass, staring at a big home in the distance. Now, there's nothing necessarily sad or dark about this painting, right? Well, wrong. This painting is of Christina Olsen, a neighbor of Andrew, who was sadly unable to walk. As a young girl, she developed developed a degenerative muscle condition, possibly polio, but it was never diagnosed. This left her unable to walk, but she refused to use a wheelchair. Instead, she would crawl everywhere. 
This painting reflects the struggles she encounters on a daily basis. For example, her being so far from her home might symbolize how disconnected she feels with her abled family. It also highlights how it would be hard for her to travel great distances, as she would have to drag her body across that field to get home. With all this in mind, it really changes how you see this painting. At least it did for me. Moving on to number six, we have Bernardo de Galvez, aka one of the most haunted paintings in the world. This is a portrait of Bernardo de Galvez, a very powerful Spanish military leader. In the early 1900s, the city of Galveston opened a hotel named after him, and in the hotel, they hung this massive portrait of him. Shortly after, spooky things began to happen, and people realized that Bernardo has attached himself to his portrait. A lot of guests have seen his ghost wandering the halls by his portrait. Others complained about feeling very unsettled while passing the painting. Others say that the area around the painting is always very cold. The creepiest thing is that if you try to take a photo of the portrait, it will end up coming out blurry or just completely dark. Your photos will continue to turn out blurry unless you ask Bernardo if it's okay to take a photo of him. Once you get his permission, then you can take a picture of the portrait and it should come out clear. Coming in at number 10, we have the Virgin Mary lip syncing. This is absolutely insane. In 2015, parishioners at the St. Charles Church in Sydney, Australia got a shock when they reported seeing the lips of Virgin Mary move in sync with the Lord's Prayer. For those skeptical, two churchgoers actually filmed the incident. The painting hangs above the church altar and is thought to have come from the Middle East. Footage filmed by young Catholic Christian curers was uploaded to YouTube and I have to say it really does look like the Virgin Mary's mouth is moving. It also looks like Christ's hand moves at one point too. Kristen spoke to the press and said, I believe it was a miracle and not just lighting because we all saw it at the same time and because her lips would start moving and then stop and then start again. Moving on to number four, we have Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican painter most famous for her self-portraits featuring her iconic monobrow. But what many people don't know is that she had a very tragic life. At six years old, she contracted polio that affected her right leg. As she got older, she developed a permanent limp. Then as a teen, she was injured in a terrible bus accident, during which one of the bus's iron handrails impaled her through her pelvis. As a result, she was unable to have children. A number of her paintings highlight her tragedies, including the broken column painting. This painting depicts how she felt after that bus accident. It features Frida with a metal rod in place of her spine. Not only that, but you might notice that in a number of her paintings, she's surrounded by monkeys. While monkeys were her favorite animal, and in her paintings, they represent the children that she was never able to have. Now how depressing is that? In our third spot, we have Black Triptychs. Black Triptychs are a series of three paintings created by Francis Bacon between 1972 to 1974. They feature a series of blurry abstract men. These paintings were actually inspired by Bacon's lover's death. George Dyer was Bacon's muse and lover. Sadly, he took his own life and Bacon fell into a dark hole. These paintings show views from the moments before, during, and after Dyer's death. After his death, Bacon painted him obsessively, often showcasing how distraught he was by his death. So what you're looking at in this painting is literally a death scene painted by a heartbroken and traumatized artist. In our second spot, we have The Lovers. With a name like The Lovers, maybe you're expecting a cute, brightly colored painting featuring two happy people in love. Well, not even close, I'm sorry. This is a painting completed by Rene Magritte and features a couple kissing with white sheets over their faces. In fact, these paintings were inspired by her mother who took her life when Rene was only 13. Her mother jumped into a river and drowned herself. Renee saw her get pulled out of the water and noticed that her mother's nightgown had slipped over her face covering it. This traumatizing image of her dead mother inspired this piece of work. For years, she was haunted by this image of her mother. Now, how dark and depressing is that one? It just keeps getting worse and worse, guys. And in our number one spot today, we have these severed heads. And just like the painting's name suggests, it features two severed heads. Now, this piece was painted by artist Theodore Jericho. 
who is known for his dark and scary paintings. It features a woman's recently decapitated head next to a man's decaying head. Clearly, he's been dead for more time than her. Now, here's what makes this painting even more messed up. Theodore was so obsessed with death that apparently he kept real dismembered body parts and cadavers in his studio. So the heads we see in the painting were real heads he had in his studio that he drew. He obtained the male's head after it had been chopped off by a guillotine. How great is that?